Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for this final painting in the three part How to Paint a Golden Retriever with acrylic paint. I hope you enjoy watching the final details of this beautiful dog. So some of these final details. Here I am going around the eyes with Mars Black, very watered down and then just a little bit on my brush, kind of pulling that black um, up into the hairs on the bottom and the top above the eyes and below the eyes I should say and then up in the eyebrows where there's little dark hairs here and there. Um, later on I come back in with some lighter colors and pull some lighter hairs in um, that area that I just did black. And here I took a little raw sienna and I also watered it down to just make a, like a little uh, a wash and I went over the already detailed eyes just to put in a little bit more color and make those eyes stand out. Here the eyes are looking really um, alive, aren't they? And then uh, since the wash kind of covered over the reflection that I had put in there at the beginning of the painting, uh, of course I'm going to go over that again and add some reflection and then those eyes are just going to look so realistic. Um, here I'm putting in the uh, reflection again and that's just titanium white and a little tiny bit of phthalo blue so it's not just a, a pure white. And then I take that color, that white, and I go around the eyeballs just to help them, you know, stand out. And here what I did is I mixed um, cadmium red, titanium white, and then the burnt umber, which sort of turned it into a, a really pretty apricot color. And I just added some of that throughout, as you can see, in different areas where um, I needed some character, more character to the fur. So you'll see I added a lot to that ear that's um, in mostly in shadow. And, um, and then I put a little bit around the tail that's in shadow and a little bit up on the top part of the forehead and down to the body fur as well, just in different areas. So as I'm using this very small fan brush, I'm uh, using titanium white mixed with the um, parchment and I'm going around in different areas that just needed uh, to have the fine hairs pulled out over the darker fur, um, you know, that darker underpainting and just making the individual furs, lightening up and brightening up areas that would be hit by the sun. Um, and I go around the entire, I'm looking at my reference photo now actually as I'm putting in all these little details. And this isn't so, when you're doing your portrait, um, you know, you can just make those hairs go any which way you want to. So, um, but this, I'm, I'm trying to kind of stick with my reference photo as far as where the highlights hit and all that. And right around the mouth area was really important to um, get that fur just right. Uh, it just kind of framed out uh, the mouth area there and just made that stand out a little bit. And there was lots of little curly hairs going in the direction of um, the downward because there's that collar under there. And here I'm just lightening up around the muzzle where the light hits and um, that little smiley part of his face. So. I am fast forwarding through all this because um, I'm not sure if you all are bored. This is part three and uh, you know, it's, it is a long process. Here I took some of my burnt umber and I washed, made a wash out of it and I just kind of darkened that up because that part there was shadowed from that 
uh, bottom part of the ear and um, and then just adding a few other little um, darker hairs, darker shadowed areas in the fur. So here I'm adding just um, wherever I see that it needs a little bit more of the um, the dark. I add that dark uh, that I made that apricot color, and uh, and then I go over it with some fine light fur. I really enjoy this part when you start to pull those light um, fur the turns in the fur around the over the dark it just looks so pretty and you see how it's starting to look like a fluffy golden retriever here and those dark values are so important um, underneath the light so still when you're looking at the painting the underpainting that I had put on there originally it's still showing through all these layers that I've been putting on so that underpainting even though it feels almost redundant that there's so many layers that go into it, that underpainting is very important. So here I noticed that I needed a little bit more of that dark apricot color there to kind of come around um, and help that cheekbone to stand out a little bit more. And then I just brightened up those highlights in the eyes. And here I'm taking cadmium red and made it into a wash and just washed over the entire tongue area and then on that um, black gum line. And so it's just like a little glaze, but I didn't use my glazing medium. I just used the, um, a wash basically. And here I just took a little titanium white mixed with the um, parchment color and I made a wash of it. And then I also added some little light details here and there, used my finger to kind of smudge it out. And then once the light was in again, I did that red wash over it again. And I feel like that tongue is looking very realistic and turned in the right way. So here I'm taking my um, hooker's green and um, I'm just kind of going over those areas that were being shadowed by the branches of a tree. And then I took some cad yellow mixed with the hooker's green and a little titanium white and brightened up all the areas that the sun was shining on that grass, um, you know, brightly. And over on the other side too. And even though this painting is going to be framed, I always go ahead and finish the sides and the top and the and the bottom of the painting um, you know so someone could hang it on their wall right away if they wanted to but I know that um, this customer of mine is definitely going to frame it before she pre presents it to her daughter who she's getting this for so here I'm taking uh, I'm just going around looking at my reference photo photo just making sure that there's no hard lines and um, adding the bright and the light as I see fit. As you can see right under the eye, I took a little tiny bit of cad yellow mixed with the titanium white, and I made a little wash out of it, and I went under the eye a bit more just to add some um, needed color under the eyes, and it just gave a real bright sunlit glow there. So you'll find yourself at this point just tweaking and tweaking it and getting it just right. Here just going over the tail a little bit, bringing some of that darker color into the tail as well. Um,
So here I was adding a little fine hairs using my little small grainer brush, Philip grainer brush, and some of the fine hairs on the ears. And I was using the um, titanium white mixed with the parchment. And this time I'm using quite a bit of the titanium white to um, really help those bright spots uh, stand out. And I'm lengthening um, the ear on the right hand facing side uh, with some fine hairs. Um, actually, I should say I'm widening the ear with some fine hairs. And here I am actually glazing that apricot color uh, over the ear. And so you actually will still see, if you get a close up of this, you'll still see uh, those fine hairs underneath the glaze because I'm glazing a little on the body as well. But when you do just a wash like that, you still see the details underneath when it dries. It just basically adds a little bit of color, but you still see all the details that you just did. bringing some of that sunshine onto the top of the nose. And here's where I'm gonna start to put in the complete details of the nose. Um, so I'm putting in the light areas here. And then after I get those uh, stippled in there, and I say stippling, because I'm just taking the brush and as you can see, just kind of pouncing up and down, just stippling those lighter colors in there because you know the nose has a texture to it. Um, you know that little bumpy texture on an animal's nose so um, I'm going around also kind of brightening up certain little hairs around the nose and a little bit later I'm gonna take my long handled um, uh, round brush the one that I said is one of my favorite brushes that's pretty worn out but it has like a hard bristle and when I mix the color for the nose, I take um, uh, a burnt sienna, some crimson red, and some titanium white. And um, because it's like a dark uh, brownish with a little pink undertones. Um, and then I'm just going to stipple some details there. I'm looking forward to you seeing me put the details of the nose. It just really starts to look three-dimensional, and I just love how the nose turns out. There was quite a hard line there, so I just softened up that hard line, um, you know, going around that little cheek area. And then bringing some of that bright white around there. Oh, I'm sorry, earlier I said I was going to put the complete details of the nose in, but that comes in just a little bit. 
now I'm taking um, my uh, that apricot color and the fan brush and I'm widening the ear a little bit more and then I just have a wash of that color uh, the apricot color and I'm just kind of going around different areas where I see it just needs to be a little bit darker and then softening up those edges again adding some of those little fine uh, white hairs around the um, the eye area and where it needs to be. I feel like um, she's looking at me saying, come on, when are you going to be done? But all these little details around the eyes and the nose and the mouth, they're so important. Um, you know, they just make the painting look so real and so alive. Aren't the eyes looking pretty? Here I'm using my fine, fine detail brush, the one that is one of my favorites that I've talked about in my paintings that just is worn out and just very very few little hairs on it um, to make these little fine hairs uh, going around the eyes. Adding a lot of the little fine hairs um, on the muzzle down there up over the tongue.
So here again we have the colors um, Burnt Umber, Crimson Red, and Titanium White. And I'm keeping the light there on the top, just lightly going over the um, area that I had bright uh, where the sun is hitting it. And then just stippling in the uh, areas all along the nostrils and down below. And um, on the top of the nose I come back and I add a little tiny bit of Titanium White to brighten that up again. And when I do that, just notice how um, rounded the nose looks. So I'm adding a little dark though there in the middle because the you know the nose kind of goes down into a little dip um, on the top part of the nose. But now I'm going to put the light in there and stipple it in. Just well, watch how it makes the nose look rounded and three-dimensional and also wet. It is ended up being such a cute little nose. I love this little nose. You see, so as you add those highlights, it just makes the nose look look round and real and like there's just sun hitting it on certain areas and then it's dark. And um, so just play around with it. And um, you know, you might wanna just take a, a, a blank canvas and just practice some of the animal noses. They're really fun to paint. So here I'm taking the detail brush and just adding a, a little bit more um, in the areas where I just needed a, a smaller brush for the fine details and some little sparkles on top of the nose. So. Um, with that mixture that has a little bit more titanium white, I just go down the side of the crease of the nose and then just under the nostrils and um, just to help them stand out a little bit. And the nostrils on both on the different sides of the nose look differently because of the way that the dog is situated and the way that the sun is shining um, in different areas. So. Now I'm putting the tag in um, and the license that are hanging off of his collar that's under that little lump of fur there. And the color I used here is just um, titanium white with cad yellow. And uh, I up at the top, just under the tongue, I added a little tiny bit of burnt umber for shadow. And then here to make the silver look of this little tag, I just took some Mars Black in Titanium White and um, and then I put a little tiny bit of a, a reflective dot of white later on it just make it look like it's shiny silver and then it had a paw print and the paw print was like red like a dark dark pink so that's on the tag there and here I'm taking a little bit more um, and bringing the fur out to widen the ear on that side up top with some flying wispy hairs, wispy furs rather. So back to that light highlight color again of titanium white um, mostly and then a little tiny bit of the parchment color mixed together just to kind of um, highlight some of the the fur on the on the ears and um, those little wispy hairs or furs flying out on the side and um, I kind of accented that turn in the ear again and then just kind of going around and um, touching up little areas So here I actually am glazing a little bit of that apricot color, just a water wash uh, glaze again, just um, the lightest bit, just it was looking a little bit too white. And here I just took my fine, um, this is my small Philip Grainer brush, just using the side of it, and I just put some titanium white. Because the dog is so light, I just am using just straight titanium white for this. 
and then I just lightly flick out towards the side of the dog um, in the direction that I want those little whiskers to go. And here I'm just softening up areas as I see um, the need and um, lightening up some of the, um, the hard lines that I come across and adding some fur going down the side of the face just very very lightly and this is my small Philip Grainer brush it's a quarter inch Philip Grainer brush and back to the whiskers again, just bringing in a little bit, a little bit more. To get the little wispy hairs above the eyes, um, it's always good to turn the canvas if that's what makes it easier for you to get it going in the right direction. I have to do that when it comes to the left hand facing side. It's just the way my brain works. So we're coming to a close of this three-part series of the Golden Retriever and how to paint a Golden Retriever in acrylics. And I hope that you all have enjoyed watching the process. It is a long process, but it's well worth it. When you're done, you just feel like you've really accomplished something uh, worthwhile, especially when it brings a lot of joy to whoever it is that um, the owner of the beautiful pet you're you're creating is for and um, and when they love it that makes you feel so good so here I'm just going around and adding some highlights here and there to the tail to the top of the head different furs around the body and uh, adding a little bit more fluff to the tail using titanium white and uh, the parchment and um, at this point, I just continue to um, add little highlights here and there, shadows where need be, um, and just uh, keep tweaking until it's absolutely perfect. And, and then you finally have to say um, that I'm done. So here I've just taken a little bit of the burnt umber and I'm darkening up certain little areas of the nose that I felt maybe needed a little dimple here and there, a little bit more shadow, like under the little nostril part and uh, taking care of all those little details. And now I am just again softening the area um, around the nose and I'm going to call this painting finished. 
So now I'm signing my name, Robin Landau, and I am done with this painting for today. And I want to thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that you've gotten something out of it and you've enjoyed watching the painting process and learning how to paint a golden retriever in acrylics. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll join me again in the future. Um, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of everything. Like and share on your social media if you would. And I really, really appreciate you subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.